Now we're going to look at another very important basic escape from that scarf hold position. Very commonly taught, but there's a couple of small details that people miss. We call this the pelvis to butt escape. Marty started to pass my guard, I got the underhook, and he decided that this was a favorable position for him. This isn't one of my favorite positions, it's fairly easy to escape, but a good judoka or someone that's very good at judo is going to give you a lot of problems from here. They'll be arching their back and creating issues. The first thing I'm going to do is try to get my body angle. So this hand's going to come to the belt at the same time that I turn my pelvis to his lower back or his butt. It's very important that we start off that way so that we can have some angle. Even if he's pushing into me, he has no control over what my legs back here do. He has a lot of control over my head and my upper back, but thankfully our spine can twist. We're going to bring our feet in here. This hand is at the hip, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge up and over. I need to bridge hard enough that he posts his hand. All right? He will post his hand or he'll get rolled. So I come here and I bridge over. Now notice that his butt elevates when that happens. That was why we were holding on to the, the, the belt. At this time, I'm going to drive my knee underneath his butt so that his whole body is resting on top of my knee. All right? From here, I like to S grip, nice and tight control. And then I'm going to re reverse shrimp or shrimp all the way to the other side. I need to put my butt underneath Marty. So many people get here and try to bridge over. Guys, that's not what it is. Uh, just like a lot of jiu-jitsu, this is powered all from the hips. So I'm going to bring my hips underneath and take Marty over. If you listen to my voice while I'm teaching this, you don't ever really hear it strained. You know, here we go, here we go. It's, you know, I can talk, my voice will be unstrained the whole time because I'm using the power from my hips to do this. Let's take a look at that other angle from the back so you can see really how my pelvis is turning in and how my knee is entering. All right, Marty's got in this position. I'm in the worst possible case scenario. I'm flat on my back. I'm going to start off by controlling the belt and turning my pelvis over to the lower back just like this. You need to post this back to get a little bit of driving motion, that's good, but you need to get your pelvis as close to the lower back as possible. I'm going to bridge up and over, and I'm going to slide that knee underneath. We'll see that knee a little bit better angle in a second. I get that S grip, and look at both of my feet come to the floor, and I'm going to drive my hips underneath it. It's important that we get that shrimp. Don't just try to pull him over you. So one of the common mistakes that my white belts make, they really try to pull over. It'll work if you're a big, strong person. But if you're someone that's smaller, it can lead to a lot of problems. Let's look at it again from another angle. All right, flat on my back, this is a problem. Again, controlling the belt, pelvis over. I'm going to bridge up, and I'm going to slide that knee underneath. That knee is underneath here. His whole body weight should be resting on my hips. That should make it easy to take him over. I'm going to take that S grip, nice and tight control, and I'm going to move my hips underneath the hip. If it takes two or three small movements with your feet, that's fine. But his butt has to be resting on top of your hips. All of his weight has to be on you. 